Hello, and this is a video on the Greek of Acts 13, 42 to 52. And I'm going to be blaming caffeine and uh, uh, the lateness of the day and the hardness of the Greek uh, for my stuttering on the podcast, unless I do it again, uh, redo it. But let's, uh, let's look at this Greek. This is a little, little tough Greek, I would say. And I'm, uh, not, I don't have my tools with me, so I'm, I'm winging it. Uh, from having looked at it a little bit earlier today, but uh, verse 42, so Paul has just finished his sermon uh, in Acts 13, and now we have the reaction. So, uh, some genitive absolutes here. Them uh, going out, them going out, um, they were encouraging unto the between Sabbath uh, to be spoken to them the words these. What is that? <laughs> what he's saying is, while they were going out, the people were encouraging them uh, for these words to be spoken to them on the next Sabbath. That's the sense here. But um, anyway, um, so exion tone, uh, it's a genitive absolute, noun or pronoun in the genitive, them is pronoun. Uh, this is exiami, uh, to go out. Uh, and uh, the oda indicates to me that I think it's a present participle, while they are going out. Uh, so speaking Canadian, this is for Mark Jellicure, you know, well, so I'm going out, eh? Uh, and, no, anyway, while they are going out, um, or they were encouraging uh, these words to be spoken to them. Okay, so, um, uh, okay, present active participle, uh, genitive masculine plural from exiami. Um, this is imperfect of uh, parakaleo, um, a word still used in Greek today. Uh, it's an augment with the present stem, so it's imperfect, active, indicative, third plural, from parakaleo. Um, and to the between Sabbath. Uh, this has to mean on the next Sabbath. They were encouraging them for the next Sabbath. Hey, come again, you know. Let's see you next week at the same time. Same Greek time. Um, this is an aorist passive infinitive, theta, eta, aorist passive, alpha, yoda. It's an infinitive. Uh, okay, any questions? Just you know, put them on the YouTube uh, or on pay Patreon. Uh, verse 43, another genitive absolute. How many genitive absolutes can you find? Uh, the synagogue uh, having been released. So this is uh, synagogues. Uh, it's a noun in the genitive and a participle in the genitive. Theta, epsilon. What is it? Theta, epsilon. That's right, it's aorist passive. So it's an aorist active, uh, aorist passive participle. Um, you might say, well, what cliche do you have for me, Ken? Because uh, you've got the song for the nominatives. It's not a nominative. You've got the, my aunt is an active participle that worked up here. There's no aunt here. Uh, active females carry Uzis and are sassy. Nope, none of those are, are here. Um, I've just memorized it. Face, it's, it's feminine. The Ada tells me it's feminine, but this is a feminine participle, feminine genitive singular. Aorist passive participle, genitive feminine singular from Luo. So this, and the synagogue having been released, uh, many were following. Uh, it, again, this is akalutheo. So you, you might have looked at the theta epsilon and thought, I know that, it's aorist passive, but I'm sorry. This actually is the real hair. It's not the wig. It's theta a, a, theta eta is often a wig, an eris passive wig. But this is the real hair. Akalu theo. The theta epsilon is actually part of the word this time. You know, as if it wasn't hard enough. Why does Greek do this to us? Anyway, so this is an eris passive. It is eris, however, because the sigma alpha. Uh, man, Greek is hard. Okay, so many uh, followed. Many of the Jews followed. So they're following them out. Uh, it's a great picture, isn't it? They're walking out and there are people crowding around him. I want to know more. I want to know more. I want to know more. Many of the Jews and of the worshiping proselytes. Okay. These are people who were Jew, G Gentiles, but they converted to Judaism. Uh, and it's masculine here, interestingly. It's masculine. So maybe, maybe these are men who actually underwent the surgery. Uh, okay. Uh, but this is a, a sebeomai, its deponent. Uh, so even though men are passive or middle participles, this is a, a middle middle or passive deponent. It doesn't it doesn't mean it. Um, so we translate it worshiping. We translate it actively. Uh, uh, they were following 
Paul and Barnabas. Uh, the word follow, this is true in Latin too, uh, tends to take its object in the dative. Uh, and so that's why these are dative, because it's just, it's called, we might call it a dative of root idea. Um, anyway, uh, so you might have thought, why isn't that accusative? It's because of Akalutheo said, nope, I want a dative on my plate. Okay, who, uh, having spoken, or who, speaking to them, they were persuaded. Uh, who were persuaded uh, after, with Paul and Barnabas speaking to them. So this is a present, my unt is an active participle, present active, it's proslaleo. Um, epithon is, um, uh, it's from patho. Huh. It must be, um, it might, must actually be imperfect because it has the letters of the present stem, patho, with an augment. So it must be something like who, uh, they were persuading them having spoken to them. So the subject here must not be, it's not they were persuaded, but they were persuading. Paul and Barnabas were persuading them, uh, having, having uh, speaking to them, by speaking to them. Um, and uh, why is altois in the dative? Because patho, to persuade, is another verb that takes its object in the dative. I'm sorry, Greek is hard. Um, so what, what were they persuading them? Okay, I don't understand this, this semicolon here. I don't think it should be here who were persuading them to remain in the grace of God. Why is that there? Uh, throw it out. I'm, I'm going to make an exegetical decision, and I, by a vote of one, have voted to throw this semicolon off the island. Okay, so let's say who, um, by speaking, uh, they were persuading them uh, to remain uh, in the grace of God. I guess... I guess that you could say, well, um, uh, okay. I know what it's saying. You know what it's saying. Why do we have two out choices there? Okay, I understand. The semicolon can come back on the island. Um, anyway, uh, but, but this is really a, semi, a, a sentence fragment, isn't it? Them to remain in the grace of God. Maybe that's what they're speaking to them. Uh, they're persuading them. Them remain in the grace of God. Anyway, I know what it's saying. Okay, let's keep going. Verse 44, uh, and on the coming Sabbath, coming to a Sabbath near you, Paul and Barnabas. Um, on the, and on the coming Sabbath, so this is a, a dative of time, scarcely all the city was come together to hear the word of the Lord. Uh, this is an adverb. Uh, all the city was gathered. So this is theta, eta, eris passive. Uh, it's ago. Uh, the alpha has been augmented because it's eris. And then the gamma has gone breathy to a ch because of the theta. It's normal. It's not pleasant. Okay. Uh, this is an aorist infinitive. Verse 45. And having seen, this is the aorist because of id, of horao, but my aunt is an active participle, so it's aorist active participle. S is nominative masculine plural. Uh, and having seen the Jews, the Jews having seen the crowds, they were full of jealousy. Um, eris passive because of the theta, eta. Uh, third person plural from the son ending there. That's not a sigma alpha of eris. The theta, eta is the, uh, and Greek is hard. Okay. They were filled of jealousy and they were opposing the things by Paul being spoken. Um, men are passive participles, la leo, the things being spoken. The by Paul being spoken things. Uh, passive, being spoken. Uh, it's substantive. Things. That's where I got the things from. I pulled it out of it. Watch me. Hey, Rocky, watch me pull a rabbit out of a hat. Um, uh, they were opposing. This is uh, imperfect. And they were blaspheming them. Not, not God, I don't think. I don't think the idea here. I, apparently, you can blaspheme a person. Um, and so blaspheme is not the right word for in English. They were, they were uh, abusing them verbally, something like that. Uh, verse 46. And being emboldened, Paul and Barnabas said, aping an aorist, aorist active indicative third plural from Lego. Uh, Sigma alpha tells me this is aorist. Men are passive participles. So being, in, being, it's the passive, having been emboldened uh, from the aorist, having been emboldened, Paul and Barnabas said, quote, uh, this is a capital upsilon. So to you, it was necessary first for the word of God to be spoken. That is to you Jews. Aorist passive infinitive. Um, since, 
since you um, reject it, the word, since you reject it and do not consider yourselves to be worthy of eternal life, behold, we are turning into the Gentiles. Again, not the last time we'll hear that in the book of Acts. So what is this? Is this a polymy? You are re rejecting? Um, well, uh, uh, what is it? I should have looked this up more, shouldn't I? Maybe it's ap uh, apotheo, something like that. Let me guess. Um, it seems to be present. So the theta epsilon, don't let it deceive you. It's part of, it's the real hair. It's not a, it's not a, a wig that's been put on. Apotheo. So there's a crash here. So I'm guessing it was something like apotheo. I'm not going to look it up because that would, okay, I'll look it up. And I was right. So take that, you who doubted me. Why did you doubt me? You shouldn't doubt me. I know Greek. Anyway, so it was, it was apotheo, um, which means to, to reject, or to, uh, which is how I translate it, isn't it? See, why did you doubt me? Actually, I doubted myself. You didn't doubt me. Of course, you know, I'm Greek man. Uh, I'm Ichthus man, for those of you who knew me at Asbury. Okay, so um, they did not consider themselves worthy of eternal life. Um, let's go back to full screen. Um, uh, therefore, we're turning to the Gentiles, verse 47, for thus uh, the Lord has appointed us. Well, let's see the perfect in there. Um, and so uh, uh, I do doubt my knowledge of this word here. Uh, but it seems to be appointed, and it's perfect. You've, the Lord has appointed us for this. Uh, this is our mission, and, and we're still appointed. Uh, quote, um, I have put you unto a light of the Gentiles in order for you to be unto salvation unto the end of the earth. This is a quote uh, from Isaiah 49. I did look it up. I guessed Isaiah in the podcast. And again, why do you keep doubting me? It was Isaiah. Anyway. So um, uh, I doubt my own existence, and I may disappear. I think I think, therefore I think I am. I, I'm not sure I think, therefore I'm not sure I am, and I'll just disappear from the video. I shouldn't do this late at night, or maybe I should. That might be the lesson, lesson here. Okay, so uh, this is the perfect of tithemi. Uh, it has that reduplication, breathy, thetas, reduplicate with a tau. Kappa alpha indicates that it's perfect. I have appointed you as a light. I've already translated it. Yeah, verse 48. And hearing this, the Gentiles were rejoicing. Yay! Uh, salvation has come to the Gentiles. And they were glorifying the word of the Lord. Uh, now, I'm guessing that Theophilus is a Gentile. I'm just guessing. This is good news for him, right? He should be happy. And probably, um, I bet a, a whole bunch of Luke's audience was Gentile as well. Uh, I can't prove it. But hey, nobody's talking back to me. Uh, so these are both imperfect. Uh, they were. They began to rejoice. You could take it as an inceptive imperfect. And they began to glorify the word of the Lord. And they believed as many as were appointed unto eternal life. And I made my best to defend Arminianism in the podcast against a very Calvinist-sounding wording here. Um, this is a paraphrastic form of the verb to be, imperfect, and a perfect participle. Uh, I think it's tasso. Um, uh, now, uh, I'm guessing that it's a perfect passive participle. Ending has been shoved right on the stem. Um, I did have a professor, I mentioned this in, uh, in the podcast. I had a professor who argued that this was middle. Uh, in fact, he had his students write a paper on it. Um, what a silly thing to do. I won't tell you who it was. Um, but um, uh, because, you know, I, let's just let's just go with the most likely possibility. It sure seems to be a passive here. As many as were appointed had been had been appointed and were still appointed. Um, my argument is that um, this could be a way of talking. Uh, that there is no philosophical system being expressed here, um, and so uh, we 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 shouldn't assume. Aha! It sounds Calvinist, and therefore there's a full blown Calvinist system hiding here. Uh, I think I, I don't think the New Testament works out those details. Uh, the New Testament uses the language of its day, but anyway, it, and it also talks about you know making your calling and election sure. And and uh, anyway, I won't get into it. So I'm just saying, yes, it sounds Calvinist. Whether it's really full blown philosophically Calvinist is a whole different issue. Um, so it's a paraphrastic, uh, and 
and they believed as many as, as had been appointed, I'm going to go with had because we have two past tenses here of a sort, uh, unto eternal life. Verse uh, 49, and the word went through, uh, was going through, uh, so the imperfect of uh, Dia Farrow, uh, you know Dia, right? Dia Farrow, she lives down the street. Uh, the word of the Lord was going through the whole country, the whole region. Verse 50, and the Jews were stirring up, um, something like that, uh, looks to me to be aorist, uh, because the alpha here, it's, it has a liquid verb, so uh, I'm guessing it doesn't do sigmas, uh, but it's it, it, the alpha tells me it's aorist, so I'm guessing this is a augment. This is not a high frequency word. Let's just say that I don't know this word, but I would guess that it's something like uh, par o truno, something like that. Okay. Uh, they were stirring up the worshiping women, uh, the ones of high re repute, the, uh, the, the, the high status ones. Uh, so apparently there were women of high status uh, at Antioch uh, who were sympathetic to Judaism. That's my takeaway. Uh, and the firsts, that is the leading men of the city, and they raised up persecution against Paul and Barnabas, and they cast them out from their re from the regions of them. Okay, so I'm guessing this is Arist, uh, because the alpha there again. Uh, verse 51, and the ones wipe, the ones having wiped the dust off their feet against them, they came into Iconium. This is a, a, a phrase we've seen before in Luke Acts. You wipe the dust off your feet as a sign of judgment against those who've rejected you in the city. Um, my grandfather, one of my grandfathers, was really good, I think, at wiping the dust off his feet. Anyway, um, and I mean in this in this fashion. Uh, so this is a, sees the key to hidden sigma, hidden sigma alpha, it's eris, participle. Uh, men are passive, uh, but um, it, it translates well as an active, so it's either middle, yeah, it's middle, uh, because it would have a theta eight if it was passive. So it's an eris middle, um, the ones, having wiped the dust, if you want to know the Greek word for dust, kuni or tos, uh, of their feet against them, came into Antioch, Elthon, hopefully you know, is the heirist of Urkami, verse 52, and the disciples uh, were full of joy and of Holy Spirit. Okay, so this is imperfect, um, uh, passive. Uh, they were full. They were being full. Uh, indicative, third plural. Okay. We made it. A little bizarre tonight. I'm even in my son's room. He's off to college. And so I'm thinking, what a nice study this would make. Uh, don't tell him. Um, are you watching, son? Oh, I didn't mean it. Okay, we'll talk to you tomorrow, maybe, if you're a patron, or on Monday uh, when we begin Acts 14.